Hello everybody, it's me, Producer Ross, and welcome to another edition of Town Transfer Talk. I'm stepping in for Mark Keith, uh, but I do have the people in the know. It's Andy Warren and Stuart Watson. It's been a busy week for Town. Signings have been made, so I'm excited. I'm sure they're excited to see some new players on the Town pitch. Uh, Josh Harrop from Preston and Luke Thomas from Barnsley. I want to go over to Hutchie, who spoke to Josh Harrop, who signed on loan from Preston for the rest of the season. Uh, what's the lowdown on him and... You know, is he gonna add to what we need? Yeah, well, we we know what we know what Josh Harrop is now. We know he's coming in as a number ten. We know he likes to get on the ball, create, move it quickly, uh, and he likes to get on a set piece. But it, it was moving the ball quickly, which was something that he was keen to stress that he can bring to this side. This morning, he was asked what he thinks he can bring to the Ipswich Town team, and and I think he was asked that question in two or three different ways, and each time it was get on the ball, create, move the ball quickly. And that should be music to both Paul Lambert and Ipswich Town fans' ears because that's been the issue in the final third, hasn't it, in terms of getting the ball there, no problem. They can keep the ball, move it up the pitch. But when it gets to the business end, what they haven't had is something, just something to unpick the lock and make and make things happen. So that's what Josh Harrop's looking to bring. And, and for me, as exciting as that is, is an ability on set pieces, for both corners and free kicks. Ipswich have lacked that, and he can he can add it. So uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing him and see what he can do. And over to you then, Stu. Of course, we've done some videos on YouTube already on talking about Josh Harrop and Luke Thomas signing. But uh, Luke Thomas on loan from Barnsley, a winger. Uh, what can you say about him? Ticks a lot of boxes. Um, left footer, which I think they needed a bit more of, of that balance. Tick under the salary cap. So he doesn't count towards that tick. Direct, quick, tenacious, ticks all of those boxes. Comes here with a point to prove that his Barnsley managers talked about him having an attitude problem because he's been knocking on the door and, and making it clear he wants to get out and play. Great for Ipswich, tick. And match ready as well, tick, because he's been um, he's been playing a reasonable number of games, be it as a starter or off the bench for Barnsley. So um, I think it's a good signing for Ipswich under the current constraints. They um, they needed something a little bit different in that final third. And along with Harrop, hopefully he'll bring it. There we go. So two in, one going out. And that is Junoy Donation. We've spoken the last few weeks about possibly him joining um, many clubs. And it looks like Fleetwood Town is his destination. I'm over to you, Andy. You're the man I know about the Genoi situation, uh, a player that fans like, um, but possibly just not in favour at the club and um, a lot of surprise because he's at cover that we need at the full-back, but he's set to go. Yeah, uh, I think Paul Lambert's made it pretty clear over the last two years that he's not a player that, that he's going to call on particularly quickly. There have been times where there's been an injury at right back and still Genoi didn't get the nod. Guion Edwards was was played there ahead of him at times at the start of 2020. But I think it also says quite a lot that the number of clubs interested in taking Genoi on loan, once Ipswich made it clear that he was available, got up towards eight, nine, ten clubs who were seriously keen to take him on loan because they see that he's a he's a he's a solid and dependable League One and, and in some cases very much so for the League Two clubs that are interested, right back. Um, he's he's off to Fleetwood uh, for the for between now and the end of the season. They need a right back after losing one of their long uh, long term loanees has gone back to Stoke. So he's going to go up there and play games. Um, he's out of contract in the summer. There's a contract option on him. And while it may seem a bit odd to say now that he's so far out of the first team picture, that there's every chance it's which take that option. So between now and then, he could play 20, 25 games, 25 plus games actually, and come back maybe with a raised transfer value, maybe, maybe even open some eyes to the possibility of playing. But I don't I don't think this is quite the end of Genoi Donassian's Ipswich Ipswich story just yet. But it's been a it's been a strange old story up to this point. Definitely. Yeah. Uh Stu, over to you then. Your, your thoughts on Genoi. You think it's silly that town are learning him out where he's uh, gonna be a good cover for that full back role? I think this has the potential to come back and bite them on on the bum, definitely. Um, when you've got two 35-year-olds playing the full-back positions and you're about to head into a relentless Saturday-Tuesday schedule, um, Genoa is versatile. We can cover both those positions, as you said. Uh, I know they've got to get someone out in order to bring people in and to get that Harrop deal done. He wouldn't have been at the top of my list, personally. But uh, I, I hope that Ipswich aren't made to... Uh, could be a little bit silly uh, with this deal, but um, Andy's right. When 
when we look back in years to come on this little period in Ipswich Town's history, I think Janoi Danassian's the tale of Joy, Janoi Danassian will uh, will be a neat shorthand for just how chaotic and um, mad this has, has all been from from him arriving for seven hundred and fifty grand, the work permit issues to where we are now. It's um, it's been been quite the time for Janoi. Definitely. So, finally, we're going to end the video on is, of course, another injury woe for town. Ollie Orkin's going to be out now for six weeks. We're going to have to have surgery. Um, over to you, Stu, about possibly Stuart Taylor mentioning maybe bringing in a striker. What, what do you think of that? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> that's basically half of the games left that Hawkins will be ruled out for, best case scenario. So, that leaves you with three strikers in Norwood, Jackson and Drynan. Nord, where they're treading very carefully with because of uh, his ongoing hamstring issues. He came off with a bit of a hamstring fatigue at Burton, we're told, last weekend. Jackson's missed a bit of training at the start of this week, we're told, with a, a hip-slash-thigh injury. So we're not quite sure where he's at heading into the Peterborough game. Stuart Taylor was asked, are you tempted to dip into the market and try and get a, another striker? It's a, it's a conversation they've had. Doesn't think anything will happen at the moment but don't rule it out. So um, Ipswich might not be quite done yet before this window shuts at the end of the month. I remember joking and saying to you, Hutchie, in the, the Luke Thomas deal, hopefully many more signings. You said, uh, possibly not many, but um, well, we could be seeing a striker. Your, your take on that? I think if you've got real worries over, over Hawkins, uh, Norwood, and and then there's an issue with Jackson as well, I think you, I think you almost have to. Um, Aaron Drynan has proved a few, you know, he's proven himself be, to beyond what a few people expected of him so far this season. It feels like there's a goal coming for him. He, he's getting closer to scoring a goal, but I'm not, I'm not sure he's he's ready to kind of spearhead a promotion challenge. So if the, obviously Hawkins is the one we know is out. If if in if in the next eight days they, they don't suddenly gain full confidence, eight, nine days that James Norwood is going to be able to stay the course and he's the one that they should really be looking at, then I, I would suggest that, that, yeah, they probably do need to they probably do need to dip into that market. Although there is obviously still Freddie Sears in-house who uh, is a striker that could play in that role. Shouldn't rule him out completely, but even still, I think I think they need that goal threat to get, they've worked so hard to bring in the winger and a kind of attacking midfield to increase the creativity and increase this team's goal threat that to exit the window with, with Aaron Drynan as your only fit striker would be, would be almost negligent. So hopefully the guys that are here, and if they're fit, I think the guys that are here are good enough to be that, that role. But if they're not, if they're not fit, I think they do need to look for someone. Okay then, so there you have it. Thank you all for listening to another edition. I'm watching, of course, of Town Transfer Talk. Thank you, Andy and Stu, for joining me. And we'll be back next week to finish the transfer window because the window is going to be closing very soon. We'll be seeing another striker. We'll wait and see on that. But anyways, I've been Producer Ross, and we'll catch you in the next one. Mm-hmm.